Okay. So, welcome to your brand new Rhinel 185. So we're, we're going to go through a few finer points with you. I know we discussed that maybe you had a little bit of uh, apprehension of being able to uh, operate a boat like this, but it's real easy and you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. So the first thing I want to familiar with you or familiarize you with is the dash in your 185. So we've got a bank of switches here. We've got several gauges. The first switch on the left is your nav and anchor uh, light switch. So if you flip it up, that's the navigation position. That will light your bow light, your stern light, which is located underneath the sun lounge. When it's installed, will be lit as well. Center position's off. Down is the anchor position. So what that does is just light the stern light, and that tells other boaters you're not moving at night. Next switch is your bilge pump. So anytime when we lift that engine hatch up, and we're going to do that in a, in a few minutes, we want to see if there's any water in the hull. If there's water in the hull, we're going to flick the switch on and it's going to discharge it out the right hand side of the boat, so the captain's side. The next switch is pretty important. It's your bilge blower. So what the operation of a blower is, is to remove any possible fumes or issues that you might have underneath the engine cover. And you'll notice a warning sticker that it says operate the blower for four minutes before you're starting it. You don't need to operate it for four minutes on your initial start for the simple reasons I'm going to show you my pre-sale check which will expediate things. But flick the blower on, start the engine, which is simply turning the key when it's in neutral. So we've supplied water to this engine. It won't be that noisy when it's in the lake. But we're going to start the engine. We're going to leave the blower on all the time. When the motor's running, get used to leaving the blower on. When the motor's off, shut the blower off. If you get into that habit, you never have to worry about it. So again, before we start it, we turn the blower on, and then we turn the key. You'll notice every time we turn the key on, that's a warning horn. If you hear that horn, that means that there's some problem with the engine, and it's normally an oil pressure related problem or a temperature problem and we'll talk about those gauges in a moment. The next switch is an accessory switch and what this switch does is basically allow power to your stereo on or off. Next switch is a horn, it's a momentary switch. So on the dash we have a voltmeter, a trim gauge, speedometer, your gas gauge, tachometer, oil pressure and engine temperature. So when I first start the engine up for the day what I like to do is leave it on the trailer and let it idle just until the needle starts to move. Now I know the engine temperature is coming up before I would drive away and start accelerating harder. Oil pressure should be somewhere in the middle of the gauge. Anywhere in the middle of the gauge, it can go higher. But if it's down around zero, we've got a problem, but you're going to hear that horn. Gas gauge is a gas gauge. It's no different than it is in your car. Although the floats are reasonably inaccurate, so rule of thumb is when you get down around a quarter of a tank, start looking for some fuel. Power trim gauge. Trim is kind of an interesting thing. Trim up means lift the bow up. Trim down meaning keep the bow down. So before we go to take off, we always want to trim down. And how you operate the trim is this switch in the control handle here. So trim down is meaning push the rocker switch button down. So what we want to do is idle out away from shore until we know we're in about three or four feet of water. We trim the thing all the way down. We can push the release lever. We can start accelerating the boat as we push this forward. It accelerates. When we shift, we push in the release lever. We shift it. The boat's going to go clunk. And then you can start accelerating. As you're accelerating, you can start to trim up. And when you're trimming up, what's going to happen is the boat's bow is going to lift. The spray is going to start coming off behind the windshield and the boat's going to steer easier. It won't bow steer. If you drive the nose into the water, it's going to bow steer and it's not going to perform very well. Your RPM is going to increase and your speed will increase. If you've got a lot of weight in the bow, you will need to trim higher. If you have no weight in the bow and a lot of weight in the back, you will not need to trim as high. So that's something that you're just going to have to get used to and get out and play with. So if you anybody asks you where should you be on the trim gauge when you're driving, there really isn't a set point. However, when we're coming into shore, when we're coming into shore, we can trim up. 
and once we get into the top part of the gauge we know that we can idle the engine or the boat onto the trailer so what we're doing is lifting the prop clear of the bottom of the uh, bottom of the hull and we can idle keep in mind that our rudder is small so we don't have a whole lot of steering in this this is for uh, idle speed once we're on the trailer and we're uh, ready to uh, pull it out of the water we trim it all the way up and lift the drive fully out of the water and you will hear when it when it hits the stop so again when we back it into the water we want to trim it down take it off of the fully high position then we can go ahead and start the engine voltmeter just like a voltmeter in the car your battery voltage should be around 12 volts when it's up and running it should be anywhere from 13 to 14 so that's a basic overview of the dash